Hi there! Have you ever wondered why fireworks have a different array of colors? Would you believe that this is due to the arrangement of electrons within the atom? Are you excited to discover more about the atom? Let's find out more in this video! Firework effects are produced by the combustion of explosive materials present in fireworks. These explosive materials are also called metal salts. Metal salts emit a characteristic color of light when heated. Each color of light has a specific wavelength. Among the visible light, red light has the longest wavelength and has the lowest energy. Violet light has the shortest wavelength and has the highest energy. When compounds of different elements are heated over a flame, it comes to a point where the hot gaseous atom begins to emit light of a definite color. Analysis of light given off by the vapors of elements can be done more precisely with an instrument called a spectroscope. With the use of the spectroscope, one can detect a series of narrow lines or line spectrum on the light given off by an element. The spectral lines suggest different energy levels in an atom. Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist, explained the spectral lines of an element shown in the spectroscope. Each line in the atomic spectra of elements suggests definite energy transformations within the atom. Bohr stated that electrons are moving around the nucleus in a circular path or orbit at certain distances from the nucleus. This movement is similar to the planets revolving around the Sun, which is why this model is also referred to as the planetary model. Electrons in each orbit have a definite energy. This energy increases as the distance of the orbit from the nucleus increases. These orbits are also known as shells or energy levels and are each assigned a number n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and etc. Or letters K, L, M, N, and etc. As long as the electron stays in its given orbit, there is no absorption or emission of energy. If the electron received extra energy, it can jump into a higher energy level. This is also called the excited state. The electron in the excited state can return to its original lower energy level or ground state by releasing a discrete amount of energy in the form of light. Bohr's atomic model can only describe the atomic spectrum of an atom having only one electron like that of hydrogen. Irvin Schrödinger, together with Werner Heisenberg and Louis de Broglie, made a refinement of Bohr's atomic model. Schrödinger used mathematical equations to describe the possibility of finding an electron in a certain location. This model is known as the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Based on the quantum mechanical model, it would be impossible to plot a definite path or orbit for the moving electrons. At least, we can only guess the most probable location of the electron in a given instant to be within a certain volume or region of space surrounding the nucleus. Each energy level contains a certain number of sublevels. Every sublevel has a fixed number of atomic orbitals. An atomic orbital is the region around the nucleus where the electron is most likely to be found. The atomic orbital serves as the house of the electron and it can accommodate a maximum of two electrons. Tracking down the location of a given electron in an atom is similar to tracking where a person lives. To find a particular person, you need to know his complete home address which should include the city, street name, and house number. These correspond to energy levels, sublevels, and atomic orbitals in an atom. 
In order to track where all the electrons in an atom are, chemists use notations called electron configuration. This electron configuration is the most stable arrangement in which the electrons have the lowest energy. An S orbital is spherical in shape. As the wave function suggests, there is a 90% probability of finding an electron within the sphere, except at its center where the nucleus is found. A P orbital is dumbbell shaped. The three equivalent P orbitals are P sub X, P sub Y, and P sub Z. There are five kinds of D orbitals, D sub YZ, D sub XZ, D sub XY, D sub X squared minus Y squared, and D sub Z squared. Except for the D sub Z squared, these orbitals consist of four lobes, in contrast to the two lobes of the P orbital. There are seven F orbitals. These orbitals have the most diffuse shape compared to the other orbitals. In the electron configuration of 1s2, 1 refers to the main energy level occupied by the electron, s denotes the kind of orbital, and the superscript 2 for the number of electrons in the orbital. The main energy level also tells us the number of sublevels, and the name of the sublevel is also the same with the name of the orbital. Three rules are applied in deriving the electron configuration. These are Aufbau's principle, Pauli's exclusion principle, and Hund's rule of multiplicity. Aufbau's principle is also known as the building up principle. It states that electrons must first occupy the orbitals with lower energies than those with higher energies. It follows this pattern or sequence in filling up the orbital. The first orbital that is assigned two electrons is the 1s, followed by two electrons for 2s, and another two for each 2p orbital, with a total of six for p sub x, p sub y, and p sub z. This sequence goes on until all the electrons in an atom have been assigned to orbitals. Note that the maximum number of electrons for the s orbital is 2, 6 for the p orbital, 10 for the d orbital, and 14 for the f orbital. Let's try writing the electron configuration for certain elements. Lithium, with 3 electrons, will have the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s1. Sodium, which has 11 electrons, will have the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now we're done with the first rule. Let's move on to the next rule, which is Pauli's exclusion principle. According to Pauli's exclusion principle, only a maximum of two electrons can occupy an orbital, and they must have opposite spins to minimize repulsion between them. To give you a better idea, let's try this example. Consider again our example earlier of lithium, which has the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s1. Its orbital diagram would look like this. Not like this. This follows Pauli's exclusion principle that electrons must have opposite spins to minimize repulsion between them. For sodium, its orbital diagram would look like this. Now let's proceed to the last rule, which is Hund's rule of multiplicity. According to Hund's rule of multiplicity, 
When electrons enter a sublevel with more than one orbital, they will spread out to the available orbitals with the same spin before pairing. To better understand this rule, let's have an example. Consider the electron configuration and orbital diagram of nitrogen, which has seven electrons. As you can observe, the electrons in the p orbital have spread out first to the available orbitals with the same spin before pairing. Oxygen, which has eight electrons, will have this orbital diagram. Fluorine, with nine electrons, will have this orbital diagram. Now let's wrap things up. Bohr's atomic model, also known as the planetary model, describes the atom like a solar system, where the electron is like a planet and can be found only in specific circular paths or orbits around the nucleus. Electrons in each orbit have a fixed energy. An electron can jump to a higher energy level by gaining energy and returns to a lower energy level by releasing energy in the form of light. The quantum mechanical model of the atom describes the atom as having a nucleus at the center around which the electrons move. This model describes a region in space where the electron is most likely to be found. The distribution of electrons in the different atomic orbitals is called electron configuration. Lastly, three rules are applied in deriving the electron configuration. These are Ofbo's principle, Pauli's exclusion principle, and Hunt's rule of multiplicity. That's all for now. We will be discussing about ionic and covalent bonds in our next lesson, so stay tuned! See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.